You know, what a perfect way to end our time together than to celebrate communion. Because after all, this is what Jesus is pointing to throughout his whole life. He's saying what is taking place here has far-reaching implications for every single person who will put their faith in him. I want you to think about this for a moment. Go back into that text that we just looked at this paralytic man, and he's laying on a mat. And all of a sudden, Jesus comes along and says to him, get up, take your mat, and go home. All your life, you've been paralyzed. In your head, you, you, you dreamed of the day that maybe you would be walking. But no matter how much you tried to will yourself, those limbs, they just didn't respond. And then here comes this teacher claiming an authority that belongs only to God. And he says, rise and walk. Take up your mat. Go home. How about if you had an outlet in your house that was attached to a switch? If you flip the switch, you know now that power has come on into that, into that outlet. How about if that paralyzed man was lying there and he didn't get a physical sensation? It wasn't like all of a sudden he felt like, you know, like you wake up and your, your, your arms are asleep or something, you get all those pins and needles in it. How, how about like nothing like that ever happened? He's just lying there. For some reason, God who speaks this word brings movement to his whole body. But he's just captivated by looking at Jesus, Jesus says, okay, now get up and walk. And for that brief moment, the guy's just laying there and he's almost tempted to say, yeah, but I'm paralyzed. You know, that man had to get up and walk. I, I wonder how many of you who are here today, spiritually, are stuck in one space. That no matter what Jesus says, you're forgiven. I've taken your sins. I've put it into the lowest parts of the sea. I I've taken that hard heart of yours, and I'm giving you a heart of flesh. I'm asking you to forgive as I have forgiven you. I'm giving you my spirit so that love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, kindness, self-control, that is what's growing in your mortal bodies. We get all those promises and then we're lying there and we're saying, yeah, but God, like you don't know what this person did to me. Or you don't know how I just so totally disappointed you. Or you don't know how this sin, it, it, I, I live it every single day. It's got me in chains. And Jesus is saying the same thing that he said to that paralyzed man. Get up and walk. I died for you. I'm giving you new life. That sin and shame is nailed to the cross. We've been set free. And see, so when this bread is passed, it is a symbol of the body of Christ for you. You know what happens sometimes? People come to communion. They sit there and they go, oh, I don't know if I could take communion because I just don't feel worthy. Here's a newsflash. You will never be worthy. Never. You don't come to this table because you're worthy. You come to this table because I believe in the one who is worthy. And when I come, I come humble. I am sick and I am in need of the physician. I am a sinner, and I am in need of the one who is righteous enough to make me righteous. That's all he cares about. So what is it that holding you back from experiencing the power that is in the name of Jesus? You take that bread, and in faith believing, You lay hold of this new life. And then you get up and you start walking. In a moment.
moment, you're going to be receiving a cup. It is the new wine. It is this new covenant that Jesus makes with us. This bread that you just took was a reminder that Jesus died for your sins. By admitting that you were a sinner, it's like you took that wineskin and now you just opened it up. Taking this cup is now filling it. I want this promise of God to be made manifest in my life. I want to live in a way that pleases Him. I want the searchlight of the Spirit of God to go throughout the many rooms of my house and clean it up for that day when I will celebrate the wedding feast of the Lamb. Now maybe some of you are here today and you've not quite opened up that door. You're playing the game a little bit. I'm just saying, Jesus knows, come on. Let's just kick open that door. Let him fill us. I'm gonna pray. So I'm gonna ask you to stand uh, when you get your cup. We're gonna come back and we're all gonna stand together. And then we're gonna pray that God would just do something amazing. All right? All right. Let me offer up a prayer for all of us. Lord Jesus, we stand before you as sinners in need of your grace. There is not one who is in this room that can make himself worthy of your blessing. We look to Jesus and see the perfection that you require. And we are thankful, Lord, that he has become our substitute. He took my sin and he nailed it to the cross. We thank you for that gift. And we pray, Lord, that our lives would be open vessels for you to fill that we might be of good use to you in the days to come. Letting our lights shine before men that they may see our good work and glorify you, our Father in heaven. We are thankful and grateful. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Drink.